Let's go! So if you're not a diehard LSU fan, don't watch this video because I like the nitty gritty. I like to know who are the behind the scenes superstars for this program that we love so very much. And there is nobody that has probably mattered more to LSU football than this icon who just retired. Yes, you're looking at the face of Sam Nader, okay? And he is going to be replaced by a familiar name who is in extreme juxtaposition, as Football Scoop is reporting here, is nearing retirement. He is a very talented guy who will be filling the shoes of Sam Nader. And we're also going to get to Racy McMath. We're also going to get into some offensive line recruiting today. So go on ahead, hit the subscribe button. And our live stream last night was so lit. -y. So some really good reporting here from Football Scoop. And I, I want to show you this. One of my friends from college took this photo. I remember Chris Parent. Okay, so Sam Nader near retirement, LSU turning to familiar face. So we'll get to that familiar face in just a moment. But first, I want to share this incredible Ross Dellinger piece about Sam Nader, and it involves Joe Burrow. So Sam Nader, every year for the LSU roster that can't go home for Thanksgiving, would go eat Thanksgiving at Piccadilly. And for those that know uh, Baton Rouge well, there's, I believe, only one Piccadilly on, on Perkins. So... Uh, you know, it's it's not really near the LSU campus. And the one person who went to the Thanksgiving Piccadilly dinner uh, was Joe Burrow. So this is a very interesting anecdote about Joe Burrow, who's never been to a Piccadilly, and talking about the age of the people that were in there. And it was just Sam Nader having a cafeteria-style restaurant Thanksgiving with Joe Burrows. 44 years at LSU. So the assistant athletics director for football, Dr. Sam Nader, retiring. And like I said, uh, there's just so much you could talk about regarding this great man. And on top of that, it's interesting because we hear so much about LSU coaches jumping from place to place and job to job. He was here for 44 years. So here's what's interesting. Football Scoop is reporting that this guy, I cannot believe I am hearing his name again. This is just so 2020, but he's actually a good thing. Austin Thomas will be returning to Baton Rouge, okay? And if you remember the name, you know how talented of a coach and a, well, actually he's not a coach, a personnel person, uh, Austin Thomas actually is the first ever LSU general manager, okay? He was the first in the SEC to have that title. We'll get more into Austin Thomas, but he was at Baylor under Dave Aranda this past season, and here you go. <laughs> He's got his own profile still up on Baylor, and here's his biography Obviously, this is an interesting biography because if you go here, this is what I find very fascinating. He's been with Jimbo Fisher before he went to Baylor. I forgot about that. I thought he had went from LSU football straight to Baylor, but he actually left the LSU staff from 2013 to 2017 to go be under Jimbo Fisher for 2018 uh, and 2019. And then in 2020, he decides to go to uh, Baylor. So it's fascinating how many stops this guy has actually made. And believe it or not, his LSU profile is still up there. And it says director of player personnel. He was that, but he was also general manager. Okay? So it's... um. It's very fascinating. The first ever GM in the history of the Southeastern Conference. So what is Austin Thomas most known for? So obviously his timeline is very fascinating because you try to remember which recruiting classes and which 
LSU teams was he a part of? Well, you can argue that if Austin Thomas wasn't on LSU staff, they may not have won the 2019 National Championship because Austin Thomas did this. Recruiting off campus for the first time in his career, Thomas, LSU's general manager, secured a pair of Tennessee prospects and two of the Tigers' highest-rated players in the Tigers' class, Jacoby Stevens and Jacob Phillips. And we continue. All Austin. He got Jacob Phillips. I knew Austin was going to be good, but those recruits are phenomenal. I didn't know we were going to get those results. So, some of it is good luck that Austin Thomas just happened to be from Tennessee and, you know, he was a Vols graduate and he knew that landscape pretty well, which obviously helped with the relationships. But the bottom line is the bottom line. He got two high top 100 elite level prospects that turned out to be excellent players at LSU. One turned out to be a number seven and a a huge piece of the LSU National Championship team, and the other turned out to be a multiple-year starter at linebacker. And this is a very interesting anecdote. Thomas was lying in bed when Phillips called him to alert him of the news because, remember, the Jacob Phillips thing, he was heavily leaned towards Oklahoma and then decided at the last second to flip to LSU. Absolutely a huge recruit. And Jacob Phillips, of course, started alongside Devin White and then... Eventually, for the 2019 team, he started alongside Patrick Queen. So, a very important piece to the LSU puzzle, and a lot of it was because of Austin Thomas. So now, let's talk about this great LSU receiver who has decided to go to the NFL. Racy McMath, this was reported yesterday by Brody Miller. It's been confirmed by nearly everyone. Has signed with an agent and plans to enter the NFL draft. McMath is a force on special teams and had 194 receiving yards in 2020 before missing the final four games with a hamstring injury. And as Brody notes here, a reminder, seniors can return for another year as 2020 does not count against eligibility due to COVID-19. The number one indicator for how great of a team you're going to have the next year, especially at LSU, um, is how many returning starters do you have? And Racy McMath would qualify as a returning starter. The key thing, though, is to make sure that number doesn't get too high. And with the Racy McMath, I think it's good for both LSU and Racy McMath to go on ahead and go to the NFL draft. So from an LSU perspective, this guy is going to be your number one option probably for the next two years. So Kayshawn is going to be a starter next year, obviously. And you take a look at his numbers, obviously the Ole Miss game jumps out, but as you can tell, he just progressively got better and better and better. So as you move along with the LSU roster here, Coy Moore, Jeray Jenkins, only a sophomore, Alex Adams, can't forget about him from the uh uh, from the recruiting class of, of 2020, John Trey Kirkland can decide to come back if he wants to. Obviously, there's Racy McMath. But as you continue on here, you still have Trey Palmer coming back. And this doesn't include Jack Besh, Chris Hilton, uh, Malik Neighbors, and, of course, Deion Smith from the talented class from last year. So part of the problem with LSU football this year was that they had too many good wide receivers, and unlike in the class, uh, or excuse me, the 2019 team, which it, at wide receiver, it was mostly, uh, obviously, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and and Terrace Marshall, LSU didn't rotate as much, which obviously helped with their chemistry with Joe Burrow, obviously helped with the offensive continuity, and when you have the same personnel on the field, you can really run a true hurry-up because the referees won't stop you to allow the defense to substitute. So, obviously, a tighter wide receiver rotation is something that we want to see. And Race McMath, as good of a talent as he is, you don't feel the need to play him. So, it obviously clears up some room on that roster. And on top of that, this is a perfect time for Race McMath to test the NFL waters. 
And as you could tell here, Jabril Cox, Race McMath, and Kerry Vinson have accepted invites to the Senior Bowl. I would be shocked if Jacoby Stevens doesn't get that invite soon. But when you get this invite, you need to go. This is the best showcase for a guy like Race McMath because he is a special teamer. He's not someone that's going to blow you away with the 40-yard dash or any form of athleticism. It would be good for people such as all the NFL personnel that are normally at the Senior Bowl to get to know Racy and hear that he is a team-first type of guy. So once you get this Senior Bowl invite, those are really hard to get. There's only a limited amount of invites. And as many of you know, the Senior Bowl is not the only postseason bowl. There's tons of postseason bowls. So to get this invite is huge for Racy McMath and obviously Jabril Cox and Kerry Vincent as well. And you got to take it. So I think this is good for his professional career. And a very good comparison would be Russell Shepard, who spent most of his NFL career as a special teamer and an occasional receiver. Racy McMath, who obviously had the, the injury this year against Arkansas, he had just started to get his stride. Um, You know, it sucked that his season wasn't what we expected it to be, but it was still good, and he's still going to be a very good NFL player if a team decides to nab him in the 5th, 6th, or 7th round. And one more thing about Racing Math is he could also play tight end. I could see him being like a a Stephon Sullivan type of player that, you know, you could try out at defensive end or outside linebacker. He has that type of size. Last thing here, I get so many questions about offensive line recruiting. LSU football and play for recently decommitted Florida State offensive lineman. We talked about him on the live stream. Kimo, not even going to try and pronounce his last name, backed off of his commitment to open up his recruitment. LSU is getting pretty much every crystal ball on this guy. So, obviously, great size at 6'4", 285, um, out of Niceville, Florida. And as you can tell, not a super highly rated prospect, but LSU's had a lot of success with three-star offensive linemen, including most of that Joe Moore award-winning offensive line for 2019, which obviously includes Lloyd Cushenberry. But, you know, we would like to see LSU get the elite guys, and a lot of you are still wondering about Tristan Lee, and we would like to see LSU get the elite guys because Alabama gets the elite guys. But this would be a good step in the right direction for LSU to get another offensive lineman. So, let me know what you think of this video. Uh, 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 A lot of change coming to LSU. And we were expecting our first breaking news hire to be an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator. But it is indeed an off-the-field role with Austin Thomas. So, let's have a discussion in the comment section. It is Power Hour. LSU, boo! Bum, bum, bum. I'm telling y'all, man, these tuna steaks. If you watch the live stream, you know what I'm talking about, baby. Let's go. Let's go, tuna steaks. Let's go.